What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. As we know, Mikel Bridges was sent to the Nets in the Kevin Durant trade, and since he's gotten in Brooklyn, he has showed out. So today in 2K, I want to see if we can win a championship with Mikel Bridges as a number one option of the Brooklyn Nets going forward. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciated. Brooklyn Bridges is in full effect he is going to be our number one option for the rest of the video. That's what I plan on doing. He's already up to an 87 overall, so I don't even need to juice him that much at all. The one thing I will say, because I looked at it right before I started recording, shot tendency is insanely low. Look at this. 45 shot tendency. How on earth can we get this man to average more than 19 points per game if he's only going to touch the ball? 55 shot tendency and then 45 or 55 touch tendency and 45 shot tendency. We obviously got to change that. For the rest of the roster, this is what we're currently looking at. It's Dinwiddie, Mikel Bridges, Cameron Johnson, Finney Smith, Claxton, Simmons, Cameron Thomas, Seth Curry, Royce O'Neal. I don't plan on changing any of that. At least, obviously, I can't do that right now. But once again, the offseason, of course, we're going to try to like build the best team we can around Mikel Bridges. I will leave him at shooting guard for now, but he does go up at small forward. So I will keep that in mind if we end up changing that. But we got to change one thing to start this video. This shot tendency and touch tendency has to change like it has to go up. We're going to move this up to a 90, and we're going to move Mikel Bridges' shot tendency all the way up to a 99. I don't care. I'm letting this man let it fly. So we're going to go, I'll go 96, something like that. So Mikel Bridges, if you can come out here and average like, I don't know, 26 points per game for the rest of the season, that'd be kind of cool. But I'll see you guys in the offseason where we could start to execute a plan to build around Mikel Bridges and try to win a championship with him as the number one lead guy. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to choose overs or unders on your favorite players that you enjoy watching each and every day. It is available on mobile or desktop, and this is how it looks. They give you the number, and you're going to choose over or under on it. They pretty much have every sport you can imagine, whether it's soccer, NFL, NHL. They have a ton of different options, so this is how it works. You choose between two to six players, two being three times your money, all the way up to six players, 25 times your money. Price Picks has just elevated my watching experience to a whole new level. So if you want to sign up, I also have some of my entries as examples here. That way you can kind of see how it works. But if you want to sign up, links in the description. Use code CRUSHABLES. They match your deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Thank you, Price Picks, for sponsoring today's video. So at the end of the season, we actually ended up falling out of the playoff race, but we are in the play-in tournament as the seven seed. So player stats-wise, Mikel Bridges, still 19.8 points per game. But if we check maybe his game log, I think there's a way to show what he's done the last whatever many games, I believe. Yeah, so uh, recent highs, he's gotten 24, 14, 35. Okay, he's been kind of kind of balling, been pretty solid. So we're, we're okay with that. So let's go ahead and see if we can get out of the play-in tournament with Mikel Bridges leading the way and we do get out of it so we get to beat Chicago and now we get Boston in round one which I don't know if we're going to be able to beat Boston by any means and one thing we will have going for us in this video is Phoenix always sucks like after one season it feels like so their draft picks are going to come in handy later on down the video so that's something we can keep in mind at least I think that's how it's going to go for us Boston round one probably not going to beat them so it's just similarly current round against them maybe we can steal one game and no not even getting one on them so Let's go and see who wins a championship real quick. Got the Clippers and the Mavericks. The Mavericks beat them. Knicks and Mavericks, okay? And you got the Mavericks going on to beat the Knicks in four games. We have a huge offseason ahead of us to start to build the foundation around our man, Mikel Bridges. So in this draft, we're actually going to have two draft picks. We have 17 and 20. So we can use those in trades or we can maybe, you know, just draft two guys. Like we're definitely in a nice position here. So I like where we're at. Staff signing, I am going to be keeping Jack Vaughn. I don't really see the point of firing him or anything like that. I think he's done a pretty good job. And obviously before the whole Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving saga went down, he had the team playing great basketball. And then those two guys got traded. So the rest is kind of history from there. But I do like Jack Vaughn, so I will keep him here. And then we just need to fill this out. And I'm going to look at my options on draft night. We know we have Ben Simmons contract. I don't plan on keeping him very long. He just isn't really going to be an asset to us anymore he obviously has like lost his confidence I don't know if we'll ever see the Ben Simmons we got in Philly ever again I'm definitely curious and interested to see if we ever will see that but I know in 2k he doesn't progress that much at all so I think it is time if we can we can move his salary or whatever else it takes one thing I will be doing is keeping Claxton for sure that's a really good center to have next to Bridges and then we'll figure out the rest so I'm going to look at the trade market, see if there's anything of value to us as we have 17 and 20 and then all these other future picks. So we'll see if there's anything I can find before we just draft two guys and settle on that. 
I low key really want to start this video with building the best backcourt in the in or best defensive backcourt in the NBA. DeJounte Murray and Mikel Bridges as a backcourt. Sounds kind of nasty to be honest with you. Defensively, that sounds insane. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Finally, the Hawks didn't do so good in the simulation. It feels like they're always winning the championship, but maybe with uh maybe there was an update cuz it looks like Collins Overall has gone down. I don't know. Regardless, I'm happy to see that the Hawks didn't go out there and win a championship. And uh, who knows what they're going to do this offseason with this team. So I'm going to try to get DeJounte Murray to start this video. I think him in the backcourt with Mikel Bridges would be absolutely insane. And defensively, it'd be really nasty. So I'm going to try to do this. And he won't take Mikel Bridges' shots too much as well, which is also something I really like. So what could I give them? We have Joe Harris's contract that matches perfectly. We have Klax, and I'm not trading. Obviously, that would be... Uh, better defensively Ben Simmons I mean I could throw him in here but that's gonna be too much money for them to take on so I think I'm probably gonna have to throw, throw in like Joe Harris's salary and then would 17 and 20 entice the Hawks enough to say yes to this and maybe I throw this pick and let's just go 17 and 20 for Murray they don't agree to it fair enough um do I have anything else of value I have Patty Mills but he probably yeah he's not gonna have any value uh one unprotected Nets pick do they agree still not agreeing to it I really want to get this done I'm not gonna lie to you second round pick Tag around pick, and they agree. Just like that, we got DeJounte Murray on the Brooklyn Nets. This backcourt is going to be so nasty defensively. I'm so excited about it. So Bridges and Murray as our backcourt. Absolutely insane. I love it, to be honest with you. That was our first move. So we traded both our draft picks. We have no incentive to suck because we don't even own our own picks. So that's why going out and getting Murray, I think, is going to be awesome. They're literally the same age as well. First perfect move to start this video, in my opinion. On player options, I am going to accept Dinwiddie's contract because worst case scenario, I can have him as a six man or I can trade him for a couple picks or something. I'm going to accept Thomas as well. And then Russell O'Neal, I'm going to accept because this team traded a first round pick for him. So we might as well just keep him around. Qualifying offers, Duke Johnson or Cameron Johnson. I didn't mean to combine their names. Watanabe, Cameron Johnson. I think I want to bring back Cameron Johnson as well. So right now we kind of have three of our starters set in stone with uh, Claxton, Bridges and Murray and then Johnson probably will try to bring him back that way we have him back on the team as a bench piece or whatever it may be so Dinwiddie we have Cameron Thomas so I think is a fine backup shooting guard so I like him as a six man if we can develop into that small four is non-existent right now uh you got power forward Dorian Finney-Smith Royce O'Neal and then you got Claxton and Ben Simmons right now so if I moved Ben Simmons to power forward or small forward does he go up at all he does not he goes up to a 79 overall small forward but he stays the same if I move into power forward I'm gonna move into power forward and then I'm gonna move either Royce O'Neal or Finney Smith to small forward moving Royce O'Neal there he actually goes up so we'll move O'Neal to small forward and I think the only thing we'll do is bring back uh Cameron Johnson in free agency and then we could maybe like trade Dinwiddie for a couple picks or whatever it may take and I guess we do need a backup center which I just noticed so I'm gonna sign like a, a Met 2 or something like that for like one year I don't want to be committed to anyone too crazy so I'm gonna sign Met 2 I'm fine with renouncing Seth Curry. I didn't plan on bringing him back anyway. And then I'm going to wait to pay Johnson. And then Ben Simmons' contract hopefully will come in handy down the line. Maybe next offseason where it's an expiring contract, we can use it. I'm going to give Cameron Johnson a four-year deal. Uh, I feel good about that. And I think that's going to be our offseason. So getting Murray, I think, is amazing. Uh, Simmons' contract will be expiring next year. Maybe he could turn it around and play some good basketball this season. Maybe he starts. I don't know. Claxton, Metu, Daron Sharp as well. Russell Neal, Cameron Johnson. Thomas, Mikael Bridges, and you got like Edmund Summer and Patty Mills as well. I'll probably stop at the trade deadline to make some moves. We could probably trade some guys for some picks. Wananabe is back. Bridges is going down. I don't love that, obviously, because like I said, we're trying to make him uh, really damn good in this video. So I'll probably boost him back up to an 87. But I will see you guys probably the trade deadline. That way we can look at our updated rotation because I don't plan on keeping this team the same uh, past the trade deadline. So we are currently at the trade deadline and I'm trying to offload some ass or not really offload assets I should say I'm trying to get an asset for Dinwiddie to use in some trades in the offseason because I plan on offloading Ben Simmons contract since it's expiring if we could collect some draft capital and some other things to kind of build up a big trade that's kind of what my plan is right now so the best trade that I've been offered so far is Robinson's contract because obviously I don't have any ties to him his salary does suck don't get me wrong but if we can squeeze like two or three picks out of Miami I'd feel pretty good about this trade so I'm gonna get one more from them if I can I'm gonna go for a future 2028 pick so let's say we did this Dinwiddie for 2027 and 2028 and then you give me Robinson's terrible contract but I'm okay because I'm getting the two picks out of it they agree so just like that we get two first round picks 
for Dinwiddie and take on that terrible contract for them. I feel good about that. And then I'm also going to try to trade maybe Royce O'Neal and Edmund Summer here as well. I don't expect to get much for Edmund Summer, but if I can get like a couple draft picks, like maybe a second, I'd feel really good about that. So a second round pick, I'll do that. That we get Ennis Freedom, I guess, whatever. He's on our roster again. Uh, Finney Smith. Don't think I'll be trading him. Thomas Claxton. All these guys are fine. We're going to have to extend Murray in the offseason, of course. And then I might trade Rose O'Neal as well since he's expiring. We're going to try to get a pick for him, a first round pick. Maybe a protected first because he is a really good 3 and D role player. Uh, you got Luke Kennard in a first round pick. It is a live protected pick. That's almost perfect. They also get Patty Mills. That's honestly probably what I'll lean towards. So, Or I could get the young player in Derek Lively, which is also kind of interesting from Indiana. But I don't see why the Pacers would do that. So we're just going to settle on this uh trade from the grizzlies where they give me luke canard's expiring contract we get a lot of protected pick they get o'neill and patty mills so we're gonna do this trade and i feel like we've collected some assets to build a big trade once we get in the offseason with ben simmons contract so i feel pretty good about what we were able to accomplish this is going to be our rotation for the rest of the season right now we're currently 28 and 25 we just got rid of some of our depth so we might you know fall down a little bit uh, but we'll figure out how the season is going. The player stats so far, Mikel Bridges, perfect, averaging 26 points per game. Really nice. Hopefully he's efficient as well. He is. So that's great to see And Murray with 22. So I'll see you guys in the off season where hopefully we can use Ben Simmons in a huge trade. So after the Atlanta Hawks got rid of DeJounte Murray, they got Trey Young winning MVP, Vic in San Antonio, Kyrie Irving six man in Houston. Okay. That's kind of, who is he backing up right now? That's insane. Why is Kyrie coming off the bench? Maybe it's because he's listed at shooting guard and he's coming off for Jalen Green. That's kind of insane. I would fix it for him, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But as far as uh, how the season went for us, we got the sixth seed. So we made the playoffs again. So at least we're not giving Rockets like really good draft picks. That's what I feel good about. We're making the playoffs and we got to extend Murray. Cameron Thomas is a nice piece. Ben Simmons, of course, I'm looking to offload him. Then Johnson's contract. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out what we do with him. I wouldn't mind just keeping him. Claxton, of course, we're going to have to extend him as well. I forgot about that. And Finney Smith. Matt too. I don't expect to win a championship this season. Once again, we're not really built for that just yet. But eventually, Simmons, you're going to get us somebody really good this offseason. I feel it. Somebody in playoffs. Let's see if we can get a game. We got one game this year. So that is progress compared to last year. Let's see who wins a championship. Oh, Atlanta is back to being uh, studly, by the way. And they are going to go win a championship. So Atlanta came back to being the overpowered team that they are in the simulation. But it is now time to see what this man can bring us on the open market. Hopefully, I can find something really good. I don't have anybody in mind just yet, but we're going to find something. I officially have a couple Fords in mind that I want to try to use Ben Simmons' contract for. The first one is going to be... Well, actually, let's talk about this other one first. Utah Jazz's Lori Markkinen. Would space the floor be a really nice power forward? That's probably the more realistic option that I can pull off. But my other option is... The Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns. We can slide him right into that power forward spot. He can play right next to Claxton. I think we can make it work. They're rebuilding right now. He's not untouchable. And man, would it be nice to get Cat on this team. So I'm going to try for that first. Carl Anthony Towns is my target. So I'm going to have to throw Ben Simmons' ginormous contract in here, of course. And I got all those draft picks for a reason. So hopefully they can pay off here. I literally have no young players I can throw in this trade. So there's nobody like... I guess Cameron Johnson could be throwing this trade. I wouldn't be opposed to doing that, but let's try just draft picks first. So 2025 Brooklyn pick. I'm going to throw every pick that I own. That 2025 Phoenix pick should be way more valuable. 2025, 2027. I'll give you 2027 Philly. And then let's go 2028 Heat. Let's see if this would get it done. So Ben Simmons and five first round picks for Carl Anthony Towns. What do you say? Let's try four first. Let's see what do they say to four picks. Four picks. They agree. Just like that. We got Carl Dita Towns as our brand new power forward here in Brooklyn, which is honestly amazing. 24 points per game. He fits really perfectly as well. We have plenty of defense around him that I feel fine that, you know, obviously he's not the best defender in the world. Then I think we can get away with it with Murray Bridges and then Claxton at the center spot. And of course, maybe we could find a better defensive small forward if we need to. But Cameron Johnson is a no slash on that end either. So I feel really good about that trade. One thing the Suns got to feel lucky is about is they own their 2024 pick because if this is 2025, I have the number one overall pick right now via the Phoenix Suns, but unfortunately, we don't have that. So we got Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think we had a draft pick at all. So yeah, we didn't. Player options, Luke Kennard. I'm actually going to accept it because I'm happy to use that $15 million in a trade. And qualifying offers, David Duke Jr., I'm going to extend as well. And then free agency, of course, the big thing is getting both Claxton and Murray back. 
So this team is about to be expensive, but we're, you know, looking to compete. So I'm not too opposed to being expensive. So I'm going to offer both of them their contracts. So we pay both of them. And now we have our foundation set in stone as every one of our big four members are locked up. Even Cameron Johnson is locked up, which honestly, he's probably the perfect small forward on the roster. We have our starting five locked in. I feel really good about what we brought in. So now it's time to just focus on the bench. So Cameron Thomas, also another asset we can focus on if we need to. But Murray, Bridges, Cameron Thomas, Cameron Johnson, Robinson is not going to play. Finney Smith, also a really good 3 and D role player. And we have Daron Sharp, who's developing. So honestly, Cameron Johnson, Daron Sharp will probably play a huge role in bench roles. And then uh, Robinson, I mean, once his contract is ex uh, expiring, we could probably try to use him in a trade. But let's see if there's any other bench pieces we can snag in free agency. We got Gallinari, Willie. Is there a good backup point guard that we can snag? We got like Brandon Williams. We got TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell might go down in overall, but right now he's a 78 overall. So I'm going to offer that to him. And then Richardson, Edmund Summer, I'm not bringing back. I traded him for a reason. I think the one thing I want to try to do is see if I can flip Luke Kennard into anything. I can get a first round pick. Plumley, okay, interesting. First round pick, Matisse Thibel. Might not be too terrible. KCP, Derek Lively, Larry Nance. Uh, the Pelicans, maybe we can get Larry Nance as a backup center just for insurance. And then Jay Crowder back in Brooklyn. Or do we have our rotation? We got McConnell, got Thomas. We don't have a small forward right now. So I guess that's the biggest thing. Maybe it's getting a forward in return for Kennard would probably be the biggest thing we can snag. So let's go Luke Kennard in a couple seconds and let's see if this gets me anything good. So Plumlee, Thibel might be my best option and he probably would be fine to bring in as well, Mo Wagner. I'm going to go with Matisse Thibel. So we got Luke Kennard, two seconds for Matisse Thibel. We'll bring that in and that will be our offseason. So McConnell, Murray, Cameron Thomas, Johnson, Thibel, Cat. Finney Smith, Claxton, and De'Ron Sharp. Hopefully Sharp develops into a 77 or 78 here as a backup center. That'd be really nice. Player regression, we got Duke coming back. Mikel Bridge is up to an 89, which is beautiful. Murray is up to an 87. Kaz is up to an 87. Thomas is up. Sharp is up to a 77, which is what I wanted. And then uh, McConnell is down to a 76. So he might not even play. We'll see. But he's still, you know, a nice veteran to have. So I feel really good about this team. Hopefully, with the additions of Cat and Murray, this team can come out here and win a championship. Because honestly, I feel really good. And even if we don't, Phoenix might suck where we're going to have their draft pick next offseason. Unless if I traded it already, which I might have. I don't know. Let's see. Did I trade Phoenix's pick? Which I probably did. 2024? Yeah, I did. So never mind. I don't even know why I'm banking on that. So we have already traded that pick away. So Murray, Bridges, Johnson, Cat, Claxton, Cameron Thomas, Finney Smith, Thibel, and Dayron Sharp. I love it. Proficiency. We're a four-star balance. Hopefully, this team can come out here and we can go win a championship in this season. I really love what we've brought here in Brooklyn, and hopefully, uh, all the moves we've made pay off here. At the end of the season, Jason Tatum represents the MVP of the league for the Boston Celtics. Xavier Booker, Rookie of the Year in Phoenix, should have been a net, but he also went Sixth Man of the Year. Giannis Vincent Player, Vassell Most Improved, and you got Jack Vaughn, Coach of the Year, 63-19. As you can tell, this season re went really well for us. So here's your NBA first team. Do we get, like, Mikel Bridges making it? I highly doubt it. I don't know if I've checked uh, the last three times, so maybe he's made one already, and I just never looked. That would be cool if he did. All defensive team, I don't think we have anyone, which kind of sucks because uh, we definitely have some good defensive players. But first seed in the East, got to feel pretty good about that. I don't know if we'll win a championship, but Bridges and Murray both average 26 apiece. Cat with 20. 15 from Thomas, 10 from Claxton, or from Johnson, and then 8 from Claxton, 7 from Finney Smith, 6 from Sharp, and then 2.5 from Matisse Thibel. Defensively, we were probably really good. I actually am curious to see uh, how we what, what our defensive rank was. So, uh, yeah, we are the best defense as, as far as points allowed per game were. So, I'm not surprised by that as our defense was really damn good. So, hopefully, this, this can pay off to winning a championship this season. We get Toronto in round one. Now, one thing I will always say, if we lose to an eighth seed after being a first seed, I'm going to be super upset. So somebody in current round and hopefully just take care of business. We do. Beat them in fourth. W. Now we get Philadelphia. So Philadelphia is going to be a lot harder. They got Harden, former net, Maxi, Tobias Harris, Lyles, Embiid, Paul Reed, Otto Porter, Frank Kaminsky, and Yuta Watanabe. So hopefully Watanabe doesn't get his like revenge here. But we beat them by four, 21, nine, and six, 24 and three. Game two, up two to zero, 132 to 116. 26 and 16 Harden was 17 and 15 it does not matter as we're at 30 zero we haven't even lost a playoff game just yet and we beat them in four and now we get Atlanta so Atlanta is going to be the team obviously I hate playing they're just always so overpowered for no reason Collins is back up to an 84 overall so he developed pretty quickly I guess back to what he used to be as he was an 80 at one point and then you got uh Oklahoma City New Orleans on the other side so here we go game one 
We're up one to zero. 34, six and three from Murray, 21 from Thomas, 17 to 10. Game two, they even it up. Do not let them go up two to one. We do. All right, this is going to be a tough matchup. Why is Atlanta always so hard? To, you know, ever since the deadline, when they got Sadiq Bay, they're just like so tough to beat. But here we go. Can we come out here and beat Atlanta in this game five? Honestly, it would be beautiful if we could. And we are going to lose this game five. It's looking like 91 to 86. All right. Game six going to be a big one. Let's simulate this game. Can we come out here and win this game six to force a game seven back to Brooklyn? It's looking good so far. It's looking good. Don't blow it, though. Don't blow it. We do beat them. All right. Game seven to get to the finals. Simulate game. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Dig deep, Brooklyn. Dig deep. Don't lose this. Game seven. We're going to lose. Unreal, man. Atlanta is so annoying. Atlanta is so annoying. They're not this good, bro. Like, I even took Murray from them, and they're still this good in the sim. It's so insane. So many curve around, and you got Atlanta going on to win a championship. Just absolutely bizarre. All right. I'm going to run it back another year, and hopefully this is going to lead to us winning this time. Run it back another season, and this time we get the second seed in the Eastern Conference. So if we go take a look at the player stats, once again, Mikel Bridge leading the way with 24.7, Murray with 23.5, and, and Cat with 23. So I really love our big three. I'm actually curious to see if Mikel Bridges ever got like an all-NBA team. He only got all first-team defense, so no all-NBA teams for Bridges. And uh, apparently no all-star appearances either, if I'm not mistaken, which kind of sucks because the man is playing really good basketball. He's on an expiring contract. I'm hoping I don't even have to worry about that. I really just want to win a championship right here. So can we do that is the question. We get Detroit in round one. They got Bridges, Kuzma, Ivy, Kate Cunningham, Duran, Wiseman, Cameron Wetmore, Kaelin. This honestly is a really good team. So many current round. Hopefully we just beat them and we swept them. We beat them in four. So just too overpowered. But it, when it comes to in another good team in Orlando. All right. Once again, let's just click somebody current round. They took one game on us, but now we get the team that beat us last year. Atlanta. All right. Somebody current round has been working. So I'm just going to do it again. Close my eyes. Somebody current round. And okay, we're up two to one. I'm, I stopped it because I'm nervous. Three to one. Come on, baby. Come on. No, don't force game seven. <sighs> game seven, of course. Why would there not be a game seven against Atlanta? And if I lose to Atlanta, I am done. I'm so done. Bro, please get back in this game. Please, please, 2K, please. Holy moly, 98 to 100. All right, I'm... Hold on, I'm gonna slow this down. Please, please, 2K. They're running away with it. 101, okay. 103 to 105, I'm jumping in. I gotta, I gotta make sure we don't lose this team. I'm sick of it. I probably should just be sitting here and watching, but I gotta make sure I control my own destiny here, man. I gotta make sure of it. I cannot afford to lose to Atlanta. I'm sick of this team being so stupid overpowered in 2K. I mean, I'm going to even off-ball the computer because that's just... Okay, you're, if you make that, I'm done. Like, just stop with that shot. I don't even know what you're doing there. Let's give it to our best player. Actually, we got a cutting Thompson. And just like that, we tie the game 105 to 105. Oh, yeah, by the way, I signed as Sar Thompson for agency. Forgot to mention that uh, as he just showcased himself. All right. Murray on his former teammate. He knows Trey Young very well. Passes out. I got a decent closeout on that. He misses it. And we're off. We're off and running. Can I get a nice cut again? Because that was honestly like just so clean. Uh, actually, I have a corner three-point shooter, Cameron Thomas. Slow release. Misses it. I get the offensive board. Put it back up. Foul. Let's go. Let's go. 105 to 105. All I got to do is make these free throws. Easier said than done, of course. All right. I make the first one. W. Bridges' uh, release is clean. He's got 22 points tonight. 107 to 105 right here. Come on, baby. There we go. All right. As long as we don't allow a three, which we almost did a second ago. Thankfully, it rimmed out. Wow, man, I am, uh, you know what? For the first time in a while, I've made a couple of good plays, I would say. I will say that. Thomas's release was just a little slow. If I would have made that three, that would have been so huge. I'm off-balling the computer, and I have no shame. I do not care. I'm going to make sure Trey Young does not get, the okay, Murray's playing great defense on him, so I don't even need to do anything. Like, I don't know what Trey Young is doing right now. I feel like just watching him, like, what is the man doing? All right. Oh, my, he got open, and he hits it. That's my fault. And we, all right, we're going to call our timeout. And now the pressure is on me to make a shot. To say I'm nervous is an understatement, to be honest with you. Um, I'm just going to go to my best player, Mikael Bridges, and we're just going to get a screen. Nine seconds left in the clock. Let's see if I can just hit something out of nothing. And, and I get, f bro, I'm so bad at this game, man. No freaking way. And we used to our last timeout. And we're going to lose. We're going to lose. 
I hate this. I hate myself, man. <sighs> All right, let's see if I can somehow inbound it and shoot a three real quick. That's not going to... I can't even get it off, bro. <sighs> Atlanta is so annoying. Hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. I am down bad right now, man. Like, literally, I thought for a second, I was like, man, I'm playing good. And then, of course, I let up a three. And I just choke. No surprise. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.